The Grandma, a small yacht packed with munitions and firearms and more than 80 fighters, casts off from the port of Tuxpan, Mexico, sailing for Cuba and revolution. Castro and his rebel army left Mexico around 2 a.m. in a driving rainstorm. And as soon as they entered the Gulf, the choppy waters made everybody on board seasick. And given that they had loaded so many men and arms and supplies on board, there's no room for anybody to move around. So they're throwing up on each other. It's just a miserable, miserable start to the invasion of Cuba. Castro has calculated that the 1,500-mile journey will take him five days to complete. However, excessive weight and a malfunctioning motor means the grandma can only do seven of its expected 10 knots. And there's an even bigger problem. The Mexican and American intelligence agency detected the departure of the grandma soon after it left port. And so the entire Cuban Air Force and Navy was on alert. The only thing they did not know was where it would land in Cuba. Meanwhile, in Santiago, plans are made for the November 30th uprising, designed as a diversion for Castro's arrival. Frank Pais and his assault force have three main objectives, the Maritime Police Headquarters, the National Police Headquarters, and the famed Moncada Barracks, the site of Castro's failed 1953 insurrection. But when November 30th arrives, the grandma is still far from Cuban shores. With no way of knowing Castro's running behind schedule, Frank Pais orders his men into position just before dawn. One of the rebels, heading to a secret mortar emplacement outside the city, is recognized by a passing police patrol. He's arrested, and the military is put on high alert. By the time Pais gives the order to attack, Batista's men are waiting. Across the city, rebels are cut down by the military's coordinated defense. Frank Pais and the rebels were overpowered by the Cuban army, but they had to go through with it regardless because it was planned as a diversion for the landing of the grandma. By 11 a.m., Pais orders a retreat. His fighters change into their civilian clothes and blend back into the population. The military scours the city, hunting down those responsible for the attack. It's a complete disaster. Had it gone correctly, the uprising in Santiago and the landing of Fidel's forces would have happened simultaneously. But because Fidel is three days late, it gives Batista's forces a chance to really annihilate all the activists in Santiago and then turn their full attention to waiting for Fidel on the coast. <laughs> 